Uh, I chose my profession as an artist at a very young age, or I would say it chose me. Um, I have lived a very interesting life and thanks to my father and my parents who have constantly moved all over the world. I feel I have to talk about my life because I talk about experiences and art to me is about experience and that's where maximum amount of learning lies. So I've chosen the topic today let the brain fly. Uh, let the brain fly on an individual spectrum, let the brain fly in terms of how you deal on a spectrum with your society and how you choose to let the brain fly through community. Okay, so what I do is I explore the elemental process by which human beings construct meaning through the experiences. And this is basically about me me as and the event in front of me and the environment and the cultural things that exist. Now, I have lived a life where I was born in Africa and then I lived in different parts of India where my parents constantly moved around. And after a point they migrated to New Zealand and then I went to Los Angeles, I was in Europe and I've just come back to India after like nearly a decade, more than a decade. Now what does this do to you? It's basically what happens is that I've been completely debased from any cultural alignment. I'm not interested in politics because I've moved to so many countries I can't keep up with the politics. To which country do I hold alliance? I don't hold alliance to any country. Even in India I've lived in so many different places. I don't hold affinity to anything. So what happened because of all these travels was that my main interest became for at least eight years myself, maybe call it narcissism. But to me what I felt was through me if I understood this very core of my being or the very molecule of my being I could understand or resonate outside to the world. Oops, yep. And because I have moved all across planet I've what, I, what happened to me was I wanted to connect things. What was the common basis? How things, like in terms of like how chaos theory functioned. Um, what was like me as an individual in common facades with the rest of the world. It was not the superficial levels of how I saw a difference in the spectrum. It was the commonalities between the surfaces that started interesting me. And I started drawing lines and dots. And the more I moved around, the tapestry that I built, became more and more complex. So there are three main aspects of my art exploration and the first one where I'm going to talk about is self-evolution. Now when I was in India I was doing, I was painting portraits, I was doing landscapes. Um, it was always the external world and the environment just fascinated me. I was like what was there I worked and I knew there was something missing, the lack of depth. The first move that, which was really big on my brain was happened when I moved to New Zealand and suddenly everything was like, I felt disconnected. The skies were blue, the grass was green, it was just too peaceful. India from all that chaos and the beauty of its chaos was completely missing. And I found myself very alone in this world. And what happened was I went on an inward journey. And from a portrait I went into landscapes in the brain. And what happened was, the, what I actually use a term is called worms in my brain and I started exploring these worms. I don't know if you can see it in the image, but basically in the worms I've drawn these binary numbers of zeros and ones. And I wanted to understand my own programming and structure and how that sort of... And these images started appearing more and more in my head. The head became like this constant space. The body became debased. So you've seen my images there is no body. The neuronscape was which took my interest. And I feel like after a point um, there were so many images being bombarded on my system. I was just drawing and drawing and drawing. And at that point I did not understand what these images meant. 
uh, I almost felt, and every time an image would appear, I would go start reading books. I read philosophy, I read chaos theory, I read the donut theory, I read the string theory, um, I read Osho, I read all kinds of philosophers. And in the end, I was like, let's wipe the slate completely clean. I was going to interpret the world how I wanted to and find the meaning of how it is and what it is. And what I realized was these images were being sent by my own body. It was like, I call them biological cultural symbols. It's like in meditation, these images are sent to you. It's like when you're a child, you learn like if there's an apple, you go apple and A. You connect an image to an alphabet. So it's an abstract concept being connected to an alphabet. Similarly, these images were being sent out to me and I was making a chain of thought of what was going in. And the more and more it became, it started becoming a story. It started and there was stories and there were meta stories and it became like there was, it was like a never-ending space that I kept going into. I was trying to look for logic, but there was no logic. And as I connected each painting, what I started seeing was everything in my head started moving. And I decided then to move on to Los Angeles, where I did my master's in experimental animation and filmmaking. Uh, and I started making these journeys, experiential journeys, where one would dive into these, I would call them trips. Uh, and in my trips, what I did was I explored a process called individuation, which is basically you finding the center and the core of your being. And it's like almost like you take a clay person of your being, you crash it, and then like a puzzle, you're actually fixing it together. You're reconstructing. And when you actually make a puzzle, what happens is you look into each piece really carefully, and you learn about yourself. It is the same being, but it's a more informed being. Um, I made two films there and it's called, one is called The Birth of Brainfly and Brainfly is a character which sort of travels from one space to another space um, through different conceptual and psychological concepts or spiritual concepts or things that I actually just saw or were sent out to me and I read about them. They have meaning, but I don't want to conceptualize it. It is to be experienced. So my, I feel like what I'm going to do today to you is I'm going to depersonalize the theater of my mind and present it to you. And what I feel is that we all have collective experiences. And when you're able to dive into my experience, it will resonate on some realm. There would be a commonality. Now, these are excerpts from my animation. They would only give you an experience. And if to understand this animation is like a four-sided, you're in a room. And that's how I would like to show it. But unfortunately, it's going to be like this today. Oh, OK. Thank you.
it really makes sense when you visit into the trip. That's all I'm going to say. But what it did was the birth of brain fly was the fly which actually went out. I freed my mind. It was the birth of creativity. It was the birth where I broke all my boundaries and I started jumping across and investigating. I was curious. I was playful. I just wanted to know and explore and do things. So what happened after this was um, I landed up going to Austria and I lived there on a beef organic farm. Now once you know your center, you're content, you're not troubled by your brainscape, you start noticing the outside world with a larger clarity. And for me Austria was more about like living in nature, where I lived in an apple organic farm where we made schnapps, which was like the local brew. Uh, and I learned about a lot of organic farming. I learned about how things were interconnected and interdependent. I learned about um, how soil should be treated, why things are done, and how fragile the nature was. I planted and flowers for the first time and realized if we didn't plant it at the right depth, they would die. I realized how fragile our ecosystem was and how as a human being we were connected to our ecosystem. Um, and while I was sitting, I was like sitting on a river and I would sit regularly at a river and one day I was just sitting and I heard the plants actually, it was a moment in my life where the plants said, do you know why the humans were created? And I was like, humans? I mean, that is a question all philosophers are trying to ask. All humans are asking for themselves, why exactly have we been created? And the plants actually, like, I laughed and I was like, I do not know. It's such a complex answer. And then the plants go to me and say, like, you know, with all my beauty, with all my beauty and splendor, there was no one intelligent enough to actually enjoy my splendor to the fullest. And I just looked at him and so I created the human being. I had no clue that the answer to such a complex was, question was so simple. That we had been created to enjoy the beauty of nature. I laughed. I laughed because then when it started sinking into my system, I realized that the nature had gotten caught up in its own narcissism and created a half-baked human which didn't realize how we were the same extensions of itself, that we didn't care for it enough. And that it, nature was a system, a system that was fluid and interconnected. And the moment we create dams and boundaries and blockages, it is a system that is ready to explode and burst. And I knew this would be my next step as an Advent, as the next step in my evolution would be to talk about nature and how we are connected. <coughs> Oops. So I came to India. I met this wonderful professor called Professor Dhananjay Gadre. And what we landed up creating, he introduced me to these uh, Pratik, who earlier on spoke about this. And I collaborated with him and me, we made this musical landscape in a bottle. And basically what I landed up doing was mixing technology and nature together. Because technology, though it has become an important aspect in our life, it's how technology is being used is what is more interesting. It's, uh, we have to use uh, technology more in revolution and in cycles to nature and which is in more in connection to it. Um, this bottle, what it does is we've sort of um, designed everything in Eagle, whether it's the plants, um, they're functional boards, they're non-functional boards. It's powered by solar energy, which you see on the left side. There's a solar plant. I'm trying to make an environment inside the bottle which is self-contained. And what it does is when you put it in the sun, it's supposed to make music. And so it's a happy plant in the sun. And it makes sounds of the earth, which means like it makes uh, sounds of the Big Bang, how earth sounds from a distance, whales mating, um, to sometimes you'll just hear birds, sometimes it's raining. Um, so the bottle has been created by a series of slides and it uses the old method of silk screen printing. And we've sort of landed up transferring the copper on there. Now with the help, and this is how the images were created in Eagle. Um, Vagisha helped me to make these images. 
um, the images were transferred with um, ferric chloric uh, silk screen printed and transferred onto acrylic sheets and then they were soldered and created as visual images as well as Um, that's Himang soldering uh, the hair of the human which is inside the bottle which consolidates the uh, solar power energy and does a trickle charge into the battery. That's a functional PCB board that we have designed or with the help of Pratik he's made the heart of my uh, installation. That's how it looks collectively as a close up. And that's nature and technology coming together. That's, could you play that video? So this is a sh I feel like this is the admin, this is where I'm starting out. I'm, I'm, my main role in life is going to be building environments. My skill has become building either digital environments where, or environments in a bottle. Uh, I feel like humans as us are, we sense the world through our body. Through experience, we understand, we have an innate understanding through the body. We conceptualize our thoughts through our body. Because when you feel heat, you realize it's transferred to the brain and you realize that this is what is heat. And then you say like, oh. And I feel like in true education, true information can only be transposed or transcended um, through an experience created. And I really want to work more and more with software engineers, mechanical engineers, electronic engineers to create environments of learning where I can enhance more and more people's brains to fly um, and be free. Thank you.